So what attracts me most of um, the concept of digital folklore is how it can be deployed um, to use it to to study to <coughs> to do research and to write about and to understand. Um, <coughs> digital cultures um, in specific places um, without essentializing them uh, without reducing them to, um, to culturalist or nationalist or, or localist interpretations of things and um, the way this works is because um, digital folklore puts the attention on uh, the processes of production and circulation of content um, on the internet so um, it's the user is foregrounded and the uh, act of creating the material is foregrounded now um, the the way I use this concept is by um, deploying it as a research um, uh, as a research focus and as a research heuristic so uh, as a concept through which makes sense of um, what I'm doing research on and um, in my specific case uh, this is China and digital media in China uh, and I think digital folklore is great uh, as a concept to study uh, what happens uh, on Chinese digital media platforms on the Chinese internet um, uh, and in the everyday life of Chinese digital media users because it allows a perspective that is not uh, a governmental perspective it, it is not the uh, oppositional uh, people versus authorities perspective uh, and it's not the um, uh, perspective of, of companies uh, of marketing and of uh, market research or of um, uh, or even the political economy of uh, internet business and social media platforms what what um, looking at China through its digital folklore allows is to get um, uh, a perspective on the micro uh, scale of uh, digital media usage and um, it is also it also allows to connect um, uh, everyday life uh, digital liter literacies and um, uh, media colleges of different sorts to um, to broader question about media uh, in, in global and local contexts so by looking at digital folklore in China one also gets um, a sense of how um, certain things circulate uh, in Europe or across uh, the US and China or across uh, Japan Taiwan China and other locales so you, you looking at one national context it's not just for the sake of remaining in that national context but it allows to 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 operate and understand things at uh, different scales now I, I have uh, started uh, looking at digital folklore in China um, in 2012 and uh, my, 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 my research projects after that have all been dedicated to different aspects and um, I started by looking at uh, visual uh, digital folklore such as memes or, or funny images or uh, interesting pictures that were shared by, uh, by my contacts across uh, different sorts of uh, platforms um, but then I have alternatively looked at uh, many other types of, con of content and of practices including uh, live streaming, um, instant messaging, um, messaging apps uh, and uh, micro video apps uh, and even all-purpose um, everyday life apps like WeChat and each each one of these platforms um, have their own sort of uh, content and have their own sort of digital folklores um, and, and it's particularly interesting to note how uh, because of China's um, secluded nature the, the secluded nature of China's digital ecology uh, most of this content tends to be quite insular and not to become popular uh, on the platforms that we are most uh, used to, such as 
uh, Facebook or Twitter so you might you might be very much up to uh, up to date um, when it comes to um, memes Facebook memes that your mom posts uh, on Facebook uh, but yeah you, you probably know very little of um, uh, Chinese memes that circulate on, 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 on Weibo or on WeChat uh, if you're not constantly engaged uh, with those uh, social contexts so uh, I, I've done research on this topic for uh, seven or uh, six or seven years and um, besides uh, as I said adopting an ethnographic perspective on, on digital folklore and uh, doing all the historical work to understand uh, where these um, creative practices come from and besides uh, developing the definition of what digital folklore is and how it can be studied um, one of the main problems but also one of the most uh, generative and interesting problems I have come across is uh, the, the problem of uh, scale of this data scale um, and uh, the problem connected to the uh, preservation and collection and uh, uh, archiving of this data because in a sense um, folklore back in the days the traditions of folklore uh, were very small scale uh, through folklore could be um, transmitted on a local basis uh, among a small community but um, uh, there will be no need to preserve it it was only later that anthropologists and folklorists have gone uh, to the countryside or to the tribes or, or to different communities and try to preserve uh, to archive to to lock down folklore and writing but um, as for digital folklore the interesting thing is that it is exactly the moment of uh, creation of preservation of circulation of exchange it is exactly the moment when you send a meme uh, to your friend on Facebook your, your very action of exchanging that meme is creating um, a copy is creating an archive is contributing to uh, Facebook's own archives but it's also contributing to your personal archive of memes that you saved on your desktop or your conversations so, so in a way, digital f one of the characteristics of digital folklore is that uh, its very existence is predicated on uh, a constant archival uh, unfolding on itself. So uh, each meme creates its own archive. And this archive is diffracted across platforms, across devices, uh, and across countries. So one of the major problems I ran into uh, in my study was how to approach uh, a repertoire of things that is not necessarily bounded. Uh, th there is no uh, totality of memes. There is no totality of viral videos. Uh, there is only this constant endless stream of content uh, that you can never hope to, to fully understand or fully um, uh, capture. Uh, the, the idea of capture is really labile because this content is so ephemeral. So um, uh, I think this is one of the most important um, contributions uh, of the of, of, of working with a with the concept of digital folklore that it, it allows to move beyond the nation the nation the national scale of a technology or the local scale of a technology or the local bounded locale of uh, folklore and tradition but it allows to uh, to think about the constant archival unfolding of digital materials and so uh, it is an archive it is archives plural archives that are constructed by different actors there are archives constructed by platforms there are archives constructed by researchers there are archives constructed by users everybody's making their own archive and in a way uh, every actor involved in the processes of digital folklore becomes a, a curator. So, on the one hand, the archive is pluralized, is exploded, uh, it is constantly reconstructed, and the only way to engage digital folklore is by yourself um, creating archives, uh, moving between archives, trying to make sense of archives, 
and on the other hand um, curators everybody everyone becomes a curator uh, it is not a chance it is not a, a case that the term uh, social media curation and digital media curation and digital curation are today not only indicating um, a role in the art world uh, but also a role in social media companies uh, a digital curator is someone who works for a Facebook or, or BuzzFeed or, or or any of these companies and selects uh, things that users can enjoy and uh, this also blurs the boundaries between uh, human and non-human because with the rise of algorithmic curation um, some apps some news apps uh, for example the Chinese app Toutiao already employ al algorithmic curators so uh, algorithms decide what content is given, given priority in users um, everyday personal feeds uh, and this all, all relates to digital folklore which I think it's, it's, it's a very important um, theoretical object um, through which we can understand how digital media today work uh, you can start from a simple gif an animated gif a fun image that you find on, um, on social media and you can backtrace it uh, through uh, Google images and find who is the first person who created that image and where did that person post that image and how did that image move from that original location to you how did it reach you who circulated it and now that you have it on your computer what, what where did you put it what is your role in the constant uh, ongoing circulation of that image what are you going to do with it are you going to continue uh, circulating it are you going to continue uh, engaging in this constant um, uh, process of circulation and in doing so what archives are, are you creating which archives are you contributing to are you are you uh, a conscious curator of digital folklore uh, are you are you aware of the the ways you might be loading the image with um, are you willing to take part in the co-construction of these repertoires um, or okay, is there some something you can do to maybe deturn this image, transform it into something else, uh, make a new text out of it, make a video, uh, create a video that's viral but in a different way than the original video was? Which archives does this new addition to digital folklore contribute to? These are, I think are all interesting questions, and um, the case of China, of course. Um, uh, is um, in itself uh, uh, an attractive and enticing case because of its exotic nature of, of things that he might have never seen memes that uh, might have not might not be familiar to you uh, entire digital culture is based on video gaming and live streaming and consumption of TV series and other uh, visual materials that might be uh, completely alien to an Euro-American user base that we often consider to be the uh, global actor but most importantly I think uh, digital folklore is a is a concept that, that goes beyond um, that goes beyond national uh, methodological nationalism and beyond uh, media nationalism um, and so global media uh, should be understood as a, as a broad collection of contexts uh, in among which China is only uh, one part of it, a very peculiar part of it, but embedded in a network uh, that goes beyond party politics and political symbols.